Hey guys, it's Linux next year. In today's video, I wanted to do a particular video that I've been wanting to do for a while that is about racing wheels on Linux. And specifically, I decided to buy a G902, which is right next to beside of me. And show it off. Here it is. And I have been using it for at least two days now, I would say, with a total of like 20 hours of like all different types of racing games with this wheel controller plugged in. I really wanted to make a video about it because when I searched up racing wheels on Linux there wasn't much information about it there was one guy from five years ago I found that was showing like a bunch of terminal commands of like how to get the wheel working on whatever wheel he was setting up and it was just rather confusing so I was like well it's not confusing today so why don't I show the software that can be supported with the wheels that they support uh, they're the kernel drivers uh, my experience when using the G902 specifically and how it works with like you know the, the driver and its feedback and etc. Now, when it comes to actually buying a racing wheel or already owning a racing wheel, how do you go about if you, you let's say, you want to move to Linux, you want to install a, a Linux distro, and you want to set up your racing wheel on Linux? How do you know if it's going to be supported out of the box or if it's going to need some type of DKMS driver? Well, there is one application that is well supported that is called Oversteer. It is a GUI manager for configuring your steering wheel. And if you have a look through here, here's some screenshots of it. Um, it has a lot of different options you can do with this like rotation range, which I'll go further into um, what you can actually do with it. But if we do uh, scroll down here, it says Oversteer manages steering wheels on Linux using the features provided by the loaded modules. It doesn't provide hardware support. You'll still need a driver module that enables the hardware on Linux. Most wheels will work, but won't have FFB without specific drivers that support that feature. I can only test on a Logitech G29 driving force. Please support your results with other devices, more wheel models will be added to this list as they are requested. Use at your own risk, suggestions, bugs and pull requests are welcome. There is a list here of supported devices that are supported either through the Linux kernel, so the drivers already in the Linux kernel, or you'll need to go and grab a specific driver module that you'll need to install with like DKMS, kind of similar to how you install an NVIDIA driver on Linux. You do the same thing, you're installing a driver into the kernel manually, and then so every time you load the kernel, it loads that driver, and then your wheel works. Now for my case with my G920, it already works out of the box. It's already in the kernel with the, uh, I think it's called the HID++ protocol driver. It's like in that section of, of supported uh, racing wheels. So it works out of the box for me, including the pedals that I got, that works. Uh, and then yet the wheel, the, the paddle shifters, the buttons, everything works properly. But if you have a look through here, there is a decent amount that do work. It says, obviously it recognizes the following Logitech wheels, which are supported by the default in kernel module so you got all of these here that are supported and then wheels using the logitech driver except xbox slash pc versions can get improved support using the new lg 4ff driver with more effects and features some games won't have full ffb without it the following wheels will need custom driver modules for ffb support these drivers are still being worked on i am not claiming that they will fully work please check the related projects for more information so you can have a look through here of some of the um supported wheels as well that may or may not work there's some thrust masters there's um fanatec as well as i know there is a lot of people that use fanatec when it comes to more of the professional side of racing Racing. a lot of people use that brand and so when it comes to the support it seems like it is rather limited i don't know if there's any more fanatec wheels but that is a decent amount so you can definitely try it out with this driver to see if it works i have heard that one person on my um, comments or one of my community posts he said his fanatec wheel did work so that's really good to see and then the other one is these wheels are recognized but don't have driver support force feedback and other features will not work so if you own any of these thrust master wheels they will not work now for me i installed the flat pack version of oversteer uh, and it just requires a restart and then all the udev rules all set up so then it can detect the wheel as you can see my wheel is already uh being detected uh, i'm spinning it right now if i just don't point my camera down you can see uh that it is uh working and as you can see we can have a uh, rotation range of 900 degrees we can shorten this if we want to so like 
if I'm on like my daytime profile, I usually put it to either 270 or 360, depending on what it is. And if I'm doing like something like rally or whatever, I like to have mine really short because I'm still learning how to do it. And it's like really quick and it's really fast. So it's like really, you have to turn really quickly. So that's why I put it on 180 rotation. And just to show as well, I'll show the uh, pedals as well. That's working, acceleration, the brake, the clutch. Those are all working at the box also. And then when we go into the force feedback, there's a global feedback gain. Uh, so this is the type of feedback that you'll get from the wheel. Uh, you can lower it down to make it um, a bit more softer so it's not as strong. And then the other one that I have is the auto center strength. So basically when I'm turning the wheel, how much strength it has to swing back to the center of the wheel. And then in tools, there's a center wheel. So it's going to try and center the wheel. And then if you want, you can do a um, simple test to, to test if the wheel is actually working properly and then you can set up different profiles so i have a daytime a nighttime and a rally so nighttime like if i'm really late at night i don't want the rumble to be extremely loud or, or rough so it's just nice and quiet and i can just kind of just chill now what if you own a motor racing hardware also well there is a new application that i have seen for a couple of months now that is called box flat and it has been getting updated quite frequently so if you do look at the list here and look at the gui because it's a gui application there is is actually quite a lot of things that you can change in this application and it's also just available on Flatpak or Flathub so you can easily just open up your GUI store just find it so I found it here you click install and you're ready to go and so you see uh, for Moza FFV driver checking out Universal PID FF by this user or this developer and it says this is the functionality there's a home page the base the wheel the pedals the dashboard hub there's still a decent amount of things that need to be worked on uh, like the hub and dashboard is zero percent done or like slash work in progress but the majority is done so see motor commands and their protocol is hardware agnostic so any implemented feature should work with any wheelbase wheel pedal set etc some wheel settings are device specific fsr wheel dashboard for example so that's really cool if you're on any motor sets they should just work like straight out of the box which is extremely uh, good to see and also if you don't like flat pack you can go and grab it on the aur or if you really don't like that you can just build it manually so and then for flatpak you will need to enable the udiv rule after the installation for flatpak so what about the games that work on linux with this wheel being detected well the games that i did try was beam and g Dirt Nine, Rally 2. Four, three, two, one, go. 50, two left long, opens over crest to narrow bridge tarmac. Into two right long, opens bad camber. Five right, into four left long, caution tightens over bridge. WRC 10. I said a course of competition. Set a course Harp and right. Three left. Harp and right. Harp and right. 
Plus the content manager mod, so you can actually like install different mods and maps on, on a set of Corsa and like graphics mods and all that. The only game that didn't work properly was Need for Speed Heat. Now Need for Speed Heat did get wheel support back in like 2020, but for some reason under Proton it cannot pick up this wheel, instead it picks it up as an Xbox controller. And there is a way of fixing it, you have to like basically turn off the steam input, you have to remap all the order, the um, accelerator, the brake pedal to the um, W and S and A and D so that you can actually get like going forward, going backwards and then A and D for the steering wheel. But the thing is you don't get feedback so it's kind of a bit delayed. So the experience when playing Need for Speed Heat is kind of just eh. But every single other game, uh, set of course of competition, WLC 10, Dirt Rally 2, Beam and G, all worked perfectly fine on this wheel. The feedback was working perfectly fine. Uh, there was no real big hassles when playing those particular racing games. Now, I only had uh, one issue with this wheel in particular, and it's that I have to plug it into a USB 2.0 port, because if I don't plug it into a USB 2.0 port, then the wheel goes crazy. Um, after like I exit a match or something, it just continuously turning. Uh, so that's just one issue. If you buy a Logitech wheel, that is um, from like the G920, G923, G29. I just make sure to plug it into a USB 2.0 port so it doesn't do that. And uh, how is the experience of actually driving uh, with this wheel? Well, it's really fun, I would say. I suck at the driving games now because when I was on a controller, it was way easier, I would say, at driving in a video racing game. Uh, it was just way easier and it had a lot of assisted steering and all that for you and assisted braking. So when I went to a racing wheel and I decided decided to try and actually do like rallying or a set of Corsa, like track drifting, just extremely like hard to learn I would say and that's why I had to like lower the rotation down and just learn how to uh, also do like paddle shifting which I already knew how to shift gears with like a manual before i've already done that stuff before but like doing a paddle shifting that was a bit different so i had to learn that and then when it came to like a set of Corsa, like i was setting up the modding and all that uh, that took around like an hour ish to set it up properly with the wine prefix and uh, after i got all that set up you can also just drag and drop zip files and that was really easy uh, and then when it came to you know just rally driving that was good and then when it came to beam ng as well modding on that was super easy i could easily either go into the game go into modding load up some modified map or car or I could download it manually and then just drop it into the game folder of wherever it needs to go for whatever mod and it just would detect it easily. Also when I did make a community post people were saying I should get like a VR headset and I definitely do agree it's probably one of the most like immersive experiences you probably could get but personally for me I can't afford a VR headset right now and I just don't think it would be worth the money wise how much it's worth to get a VR headset and then actually using it. I may not use it that much and I may not use this wheel as much after this video is made. I may stop using it because you know, I want to go back to playing like FPS shooters because I really like playing those types of genres. And then the other one is the three monitors. I was trying to set up three monitors but I don't really know how to do that especially on Wayland. I don't know if there is support for doing that type of stuff where you can extend the game of the car or just the game itself to all three monitors. That just doesn't seem to be possible on Linux with Wayland Pacific it may be possible with X11, but I don't really want to use X11 at this point in time. It just doesn't seem not really pointless. Just like I'm already been using Wayland for like a year now without many issues. I don't really care if I have to use one monitor, but if you, you know, wanting to know if you could stretch a game to three monitors, it's not really possible, I would say on here, at least under Wayland, it's not possible. So my conclusion to this video and my experience when uh, racing on Linux with a G902 is that it works out of the box. There's no 
issues really with many games, only Need for Speed Heat. There may be some other issues with other games that I didn't get to test, uh, but when it came to playing a set of Corsa or the Competition one or WRC 10, Dirt Rally 2 or Beam NG uh, with the modding and all that, it worked perfectly fine. So uh, that does it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. I think we hit 6.8k subscribers, I think, uh, which is pretty damn awesome. Yes, we hit 6.8k subs. So thank you for that. I really do appreciate that. Uh, thank you to my editor also. And thank you to my members. I'll show a screenshot of you now. I really do appreciate you guys. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the uh, next video, which hopefully will be like either Plasma 6.2 or something else. Maybe another rant video. Who really knows? Peace.